Hello, Milepost 1. Today in IPC, we are beginning our unit on geography. We've done our knowledge harvest, and you guys have presented so many fabulous questions about water that I am very interested and intrigued to answer over the course of the next four weeks. Today, though, Let's start our lesson on geography. I've already posted a link on Class Dojo asking you to color in a hundred square with how much of the world you think is covered in water and how much of the world you think is land. If you have not done this task yet, please stop and pause this video and do that task first. If you have, fabulous, let's continue. This is a geographical map of the world. A geographical map doesn't show us where countries are. Instead, it shows us where the main geographical features of the world exist. For example, we can see mountain ranges here and here and here and here. We can also see deserts, areas without a lot of water and without a lot of green space. So here in Asia, here in Southern Africa, in the west coast of the Americas. We can also see lakes. For example, these are the Great Lakes of America. We can see rivers. Let's look at the rivers here in South America, as well as the Nile River here in Africa. And most importantly, we can see oceans. Having a look at this picture, this map rather, how much of the world do you think is land? And how much of the world do you think is water? Well, it turns out 70% of the Earth's surface is water. This is the same, by the way, as your human body. 70% of your body is made up of water. That means only 30% of the Earth's surface is land. Now, have a look here. We have eight liters of water. And these eight liters of water, let's count just to be sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These eight liters of water represent all of the water in all of planet Earth. And water is a finite resource. That means these eight liters of water have always been there and they will always be there. Where in the world do you think this water exists? Take a moment to think. You could chat with a family member or a friend. Where in the world can we find water? One place, one of the biggest places, is in the oceans. And we know this because we live quite close to the Indian Ocean. Another place we can find water is in rivers. Perhaps you've been to the Congo River Another place we can find water is in ponds. These are small areas of fresh water. Another place we can find water is underground. This happens when rain or other precipitation falls down to the earth and then seeps through the rock and soil layers and pools underground. We call this groundwater. We can also find water in the clouds and in the atmosphere. This is where rain and snow come from. 
we can find water in lakes. Lakes tend to be fresh water, not salty. In Kenya, we can think of Lake Victoria as an example. We can find water in streams. Streams are similar to rivers, but they tend to be much smaller. Finally, we can find frozen water in the form of ice. Most of the ice and frozen water in the world exists at the North and South Poles. However, in the northern climates, when it's winter time, water falls down from the sky as snow or sometimes hail. So, here we have our eight liters of water, from which I've removed 240 milliliters. Can you guess why? Well, this 7.7 .7 liters of water represents the salt water in the world. This is the water that's in oceans, and this is water that we cannot drink. Many of us in Diani perhaps have salt water coming from our taps, so you know that you cannot drink it. Perhaps you can use it for doing dishes or washing laundry, but it's not healthy to drink salt water. The remaining 240 milliliters represent all of the fresh water on the earth. Sorry, I'm not quite sure why my screen has cut off the er from water. Now, after that, we will separate 80 milliliters of that 240 milliliters of fresh water into water for us. That means of all of the water on the earth, 7.76 .7 liters are salt water, which we cannot drink. 240 milliliters are fresh water, but of that, 160 milliliters are frozen. That means they are frozen in glaciers and ice caps and snows, and we cannot access it. So of that eight liters, the equivalent of 80 milliliters is water for us. Here's another diagram demonstrating the same principle. Most of the water in the world is salty. Of the small bit that isn't salty, that is fresh water, the majority of it is frozen. Only a small portion is not frozen, thus constituting water for us. I have three questions now for you to think about. First, how easy is it for us to drink salt water? If you've ever been to the beach, Think about what happens when a massive wave passes over your head and you accidentally swallow too much salt water. Do you feel refreshed or do you feel thirsty? My second question is, how easy is it to drink fresh water? Sure, perhaps you have ice cubes in your freezer and you'll add them to your water or your juice, and they're quite easy to drink then. But what about places where everything is frozen? How would you go about drinking water? Also, where do you think most of the frozen water in the world exists? My final question for now is, how do we get the remaining water? that is available for us. Here's another map of the world, but this one includes the frozen regions. So we can look in the north and see 
there seems to be a bit of ice. Then we look in the south at Antarctica and see that mm, most of the South Pole is indeed ice. Here's another world map. This one represents the amount of ice in various places of the world. So again, we have a bit of ice in the north. We have a lot of ice in the south at the South Pole. And then there's a little bit of ice in other places in the world. What this means is it's quite difficult to drink water that is frozen into ice. Where do we get our water? This is a very, very, very simple picture that explains the water cycle. So, when we have large bodies of water, or even small bodies of water, the sun heats up the water. So the water changes from a liquid into a gas. It moves up to the sky as steam or water vapor. Here, the water molecules join into clouds. And when the clouds get heavy enough, when there's too much water or when they're so heavy that they can't remain clouds anymore, that's when we get rain or snow. We don't get snow here, but it could be either, depending on where in the world you live. So the water falls back down from the clouds to the earth, and then the cycle starts again. The water flows back into lakes or rivers or the seas or puddles at school, and the cycle starts again. So, if we consider that only 80 milliliters of 8 liters of water is fresh water for us, what do we mean by us? First, that means all of the people in the entire world. That's not just Diani. That's not just Kenya. That's not just Africa. That's every single human being in the entire world needs water. In addition to that, I mean all of the plants in the world all of the trees, all of the grass, all of the vegetables, all of the fruits. Every single plant in the world also needs this water. In addition, all of the animals in this world need water. You can think about your pets, or you can think about perhaps some meat that you like to eat. All of those animals need water. Furthermore, this means all of the fresh water that isn't frozen. So that's all of the lakes, the streams, the rivers, and the groundwater. Why is this important? If you think about the fact that there are 80 milliliters of 8 liters that is 1% of the world's water is fresh water and is available for plants and animals to live and drink. That makes fresh water a very precious resource. This isn't something we should waste. Not enough people in the world, not enough animals and plants in the world have fresh water. We need to treat it as a precious resource because it is. Furthermore, there's a limited amount of water. All of the water that is in the earth has been here since the beginning of the earth, and we won't have any more or any less water for the duration of the earth. Furthermore, all of this water is shared by all living creatures. In one of our previous IPC topics, we discussed habitats. 
and habitats, within habitats, creatures need food, water, and shelter. Every living creature on the earth needs water. Fresh water is very, very important. It is precious, it is limited, and it should never be wasted. Now, to cap up today's lesson, I have a few questions for you, and I hope you will respond and post your lessons on Class Dojo. First, did anything surprise you about today's lesson? I know personally I was a bit surprised about the fraction of water that is available to living things as compared to the amount of water in the entire earth. Second, how accurate or correct or right was your initial guess about the amount of land and water in the world? If you weren't correct, that's okay. Mistakes are how we learn. Third, is freshwater common or rare or scarce? How do you know? Please answer these three questions and upload your answers to Class Dojo. Furthermore, have a think over the weekend because on Monday, your task will be to make a presentation to teach someone else about water. Miss Njane will guide you through making a pamphlet or a document to teach someone else. The three topics I'd like you to think about and I strongly encourage you to discuss with someone at home, be it a parent or a sibling, are these three questions. How much of our water, uh, how much of our planet, sorry, is covered in water? How little or how much of our planet's water can we use? And why and how do we know that fresh water is a very precious resource? Thanks guys, and I really look forward to seeing your answers on Glass Dojo.